Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Well, now wait a minute. Now, how could you nailed it twice and then you forgot what you were doing? What is it? I don't know. Welcome, friends. Welcome and happy Easter. Um, is everybody have a seat? Looks like yes. There are a few seats that are empty. We also have some folding chairs in the back if we need. Um, if, if people come looking, and I might ask you to kind of push in if you can so we leave some seats on the aisle, but right now it looks like we are good. And everybody has a bulletin and a hymnal to look at. You might have to share a hymn. Tricia, you don't have a hymnal. Mary Beth, will you share? Oh. <laughs> How many does she need? Really? All right, good. At least, as long as everybody has one at least to look off of, okay. Uh, welcome to those of you who are worshiping uh, from away, whether you are at home or you are traveling. Uh, we are glad that you are also here to celebrate on this Easter day with us. Um, all of our hymns today will be in that blue book, that hymnal 1982. So that is the book that you will, you will need. I have uh, a few prayer concerns, and I'm guessing that you might have some as well. Uh, first, I would ask that you would remember Dennis in your prayers, Dennis who is having surgery on Tuesday. Remember Kathleen who has having surgery on Thursday? Wednesday, Wednesday, okay, it was close. Thursday if you missed it, all right. Oh, no, 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 Wednesday, coming up this week. Debbie, who had surgery this week, but is able to be with us this morning. I know she's here somewhere. There she is. All right, but let's keep praying for her. And also, please continue to pray for Millie A. Um, she was discharged from Bay State and is now at Life Care in Wilbraham. In fact, we will be uh, dedicating Blessing a Prayer Shawl for her, and she'll be receiving that as well as communion and an Easter flower after church today. But please keep Millie in your prayers. For whom else should we be praying? For whom else would you like us to be aware of a concern? Please, Elaine. For Isabel. Thank you. Can Kathleen. Can you please pray for my son James who's traveling now to Denver, Colorado on Monday? Traveling mercies for Zan. For whom else? All right. Um, okay, now is one of those times when I might ask you to move down. Um, I'm sorry, hang just a minute. Read and share. Um, are there two together? Okay, great. Perfect. Yes, sir. I think we should pray for all the people in the military who can't be with their families tonight because they're out serving our country. <clears throat> prayers for our military in gratitude for their service and prayers for them as they celebrate away from their families for all who must celebrate away from their families today. All right. Please, Kathleen. Just one more time. This prayer is for all the families of the British workers who were lost. <laughs> Prayers for the people of Baltimore and especially for the families of those who were lost in the bridge collapse. Yes. All right. Well, we begin our service with Thanksgiving for baptism. I'm going to actually just pause one more minute because we're now making room for a few more people. Um, there are two seats up in the front row. I know. I promise I won't call on you to participate. I promise. I promise. That'd be great. Someone's going to be participating, aren't they? I mean, are you all giving up your bulletins? Okay. There are two seats together in the front row, and like I said, I promise I will not call on you for anything. 
can we? There are folding chairs in the back corner next to the organ. There's two seats in the middle here. Now, no one's going to want to sit that close to you, right? Katie, Katie, are you back there, Katie? Yeah. While everyone's finding a seat, why don't you come on up? Everybody good? Oh, we're working on it? Sure, he already invited. Good. There's one seat in the front then? Katie, come on up. That Katie? Too many Katies this morning. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody, right? All right. Got to love it. All right. Are you folks who are hovering in the back? Can you pull in more folding chairs or you're, you're comfortable? Everybody's good? OK. All right. As you are able, would you please stand as we begin in this Easter season with Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers, the ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here, here is our water of life. Alleluia.
the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I invite any children who are here with us today to come up front. Uh, we don't, I, I see some nudging there. Children of any age are welcome. <laughs> ah, see, I got that. I got that. All right. All right, good. Well, this is going to be a moving children's sermon. I don't know if it's going to be moving this way, but it's going to be moving from place to place, so I need you all to come over here. Come over here. Now, those of you who were in Sunday school with us, you stay down here on this side, all right? Um, you, you know the whole story of Easter Day because you made a wonderful map of, of what happened on, in Holy Week. And for those of you who haven't seen it, it's posted on our bulletin board. They did a great job on that. So can every, come on down here, bunch around, bunch around, bunch up, bunch up. There we go. Let the little ones in the front so they can see, right? Here, Hazel, you come up here with me. Here, and Savannah's here with me. Good. Now. What, what do these remind you of? Go ahead, go ahead. They're palms, and why would I have palms up here? What happened on, to honor Jesus, yes, on Palm Sunday, one week ago today, we remembered how Jesus, how the crowds gathered along the roads of the town. See, yeah, they're getting kind of dried out, aren't they? They're kind of crispy at this point. That's because it was a whole week ago, right? But they waved palms at Jesus to honor him as king. That was on Sunday. Okay, everybody take a few steps this direction. Okay, good. And then on Thursday night of Holy Week, the week between Palm Sunday and Easter, something happened very important. Does this remind you of anything? What do you see here? What are these? Go ahead. A cup and a plate. A cup and a plate. And why would there be a cup and a plate here? What did Jesus do on Thursday night? Katie, do you know? Um, he um, took the bread and wine. He took the bread and the wine, and he gave us the Lord's Supper, just like we're going to share up here a little later in the service. Yes, he gave us Holy Communion. Take a few steps this way. Good, very good. This must be great on the video, right? <laughs> on Thursday also, not only did he do this at supper, he did something with this. What, what do you see here? What is this? A jar or a pitcher? And what's this? 
like a big bowl. What did Jesus do with the pitcher and the bowl on that same night, Thursday night at dinner? Do you know? He put, oh, that's a very good guess, but not quite. He put water water in the pitcher, and why did he do that? You're not going to, if you don't know this, if you never heard this before, you're not going to believe this. He washed his disciples' feet. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Hazel agrees, right? They put their feet, and he poured water to show how much he loved them and to show that we should all love each other. Good. All right, take a few steps this way. This is a longer shuffle this time. That was Sunday. That was Thursday. This was Friday, the day we call Good Friday. What happened on Good Friday? He died. He died. And how did he die? On the, he died. He died on the cross. That's right. He died on the cross. Yes. Is it called Good Friday? Oh, I am so glad you asked that question. What, the question was, why do we call it Good Friday? Good Friday, if it was a day that he died. We call it Good Friday because he loved us so much that he he let himself suffer for us so that we would not have to. He let himself die so that when we get to the end of the story, we would all know that when we die, there's something else coming after for us. Does that make sense? If he didn't die, he couldn't have been raised from the dead, which, everybody do your shuffle. All right, Hazel, you might want to be in the front for this so you can see. He died... They put his body in the in a cave, in a tomb. But when they came on Easter morning, what was inside the tomb? Uh, bright light. A bright light? Oh, maybe. Nothing. Now, look inside the tomb. What do you see? Uh, him. You see him? Yeah. Who is that? Well, you might think it's Jesus, but actually the story, the way we tell it this morning, there's a man inside there. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. If you look inside the tomb, you see a man who was probably an angel, right? But there was a man in the tomb, but not Jesus. They put Jesus in the tomb, but he didn't stay in the tomb because he rose again. He is alive, and that is what we celebrate on Easter Day. And every Sunday when we come to church, we remember that Jesus is alive. This is a great story, and I'm so glad that you helped me to tell it for everybody today. And just because I am so happy that you all are here with me today, I have for you a little Easter gift. Now, these are all a little bit different. I don't want any fussing and fighting over them. So. <laughs> When you get back to the back corner, if you want to trade for, that's okay. If you want to trade, you're certainly welcome. But here is, Savannah, here is a little bracelet for you with an Easter egg on it, which is another symbol of Easter. There you go. And like I said, you can trade, all right? I wish you all a very happy Easter. I hope you have a good day with your families and you have lots of fun and that you remember just as Mr. Mark is playing on the organ, all of this means that Jesus loves us very much. All right? Thank you so much. You can go back to your seats. Well, that's going to be a little hard. It's sort of small, but there's the tomb, all right?
Today's first reading is from the book of Acts. <laughs> Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Will you please join me now in reading a portion of Psalm 118 responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has now in him. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the words of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Thy Lord has risen and done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, 
and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I, then, or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. You know what I love about that is that nobody ever just says that back. They, they almost kind of shout it back, right? Because Easter is loud. Mark has and will pull out all the stops on the organ. The choir will raise their voices in triumphant song. The bells will ring, adding their joyful noise. And the peaceful people will shout, Alleluia. Easter is noisy. And Easter is larger than life. It's a larger than life day with a momentous story and an amazing floral display, thanks to Liz and Donna. And for many of us, big family dinners and Easter baskets overflowing with goodies. Easter is large. Easter is huge. Easter is loud. It's big. And when you really think about it, this day is overwhelming with its message that God has overcome hate with love, has overpowered despair with hope, has conquered death by life. But what if I told you that one of In my opinion, one of the most overwhelming things about Easter might just be one of the smallest, 
quietest, seemingly insignificant details of this story. Think about the story that I just read for you from St. Mark's Gospel. It is, I should note, very different, very different than the way the other Gospel writers tell the Easter story, maybe different than what we're accustomed to hearing. There are no earthquakes. There are no angels rolling back the stone. There are no Roman guards falling over in fear as there are in Matthew. In Mark, there are no men in dazzling clothes as there are in Luke. In Mark, there's no personal encounter with a gardener, AKA Jesus, like we find in John. In Mark, there's just a guy in the tomb who might or might not be an angel, it doesn't really say, who tells the women to take a message to the disciples and Peter, which according to what scholars believe is the original ending of Mark's gospel. It ends, the gospel ends in its original right here at verse eight, the way it did today, with the women doing absolutely nothing not doing what they were told to do, but leaving in fear and not saying a word to anybody. Now, if you don't find that a particularly satisfying or inspiring ending to the Easter story, I agree, I'm not surprised. It's not loud enough. It ends with a whimper instead of a bang. And it's not larger than life, right? In fact, the failure of the women to do what they've been told to do reminds me all too much of the everyday, ordinary ways that I fail to do what I am supposed to do. That's not larger than life. That's very much a part of life. But listen again to the message spoken by the mysterious man in the tomb. He said, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Go tell his disciples and Peter. That's curious. Why mention Peter separately from the others? It could be because Peter was already known as a leader among the disciples. But in my imagination, it's because Peter specifically was the one who most needed to hear the message that Jesus was alive. Put yourself in Peter's shoes for just a moment. Imagine what he had done just three days earlier. He had resorted to violence, cutting off the ear of a guard for which Jesus had scolded him. He had denied knowing Jesus or having anything to do with him to save his own skin. He had completely blown his chance to stand up for Jesus and to be the leader he wanted to be, and there was nothing he could do about it. Jesus was dead and buried. Peter could not apologize. He could not look into his master's eyes and seek forgiveness. All he could do was wallow in guilt and pain. And maybe that's why the message was given to the women to give specifically to Peter. A reminder that yes, the resurrection from the dead is a big cosmic event, but it is also intensely personal. Peter really needed to know that the things that he hated about himself, like his unfaithfulness, had been covered over 
by the love of God. Peter really needed to feel hope because his despair must have been pretty deep. He really needed to understand that the God of life had overcome death. Go tell the disciples and Peter, especially Peter, because this message is for him. And what I sincerely hope, desire, pray that you hear today is that the message of Jesus' resurrection is for you personally, for you right now, in whatever way you most need to hear it. If you feel hate or anger in your heart toward yourself or toward someone else, then this message is for you. Love wins. Or on the other hand, if you feel like everyone's got it out for you, then this message is for you. Love wins. Say that with me. Love wins. Say it again. Love wins. But wait, there's more. If you, like Peter, feel that you are caught in a pit of dark despair, if you just can't imagine how the situation you're in can get any better, if you are having trouble seeing the point in keeping going from day to day, then you need to hear this part of the Easter message. Hope endures. Say that with me. Hope, Hope endures. endures. But wait, there's more. If you are grieving, if you are afraid of losing someone you love, if you are facing your own mortality, then maybe what you need to hear most is this part of the Easter message. Life is forever. Say that with me. Life is forever. That's right. Love wins, hope endures, and life is forever. It is a larger-than-life message, and we shout it loudly on Easter morning. But it doesn't always have to be loud. After all, in this noisy world, sometimes the thing that most gets our attention is the whisper. And so hear this when I say to you directly, personally, and with quiet joy, Christ is risen for you. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love's love in the world. God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life that together we may proclaim Easter hope, God of grace. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Let us now share our own prayers, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death, especially John and all those whose ministry and the acts inspired generations of faith. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share signs of peace with one another. As you are slowly returning to your seats, as you are slowly returning to your seats, I want to draw to your attention today that the children will be presenting their offerings today in a little different way. Um, we're all invited, of course, to support the work of Jesus in our community and in the world, and the children who have been in our Sunday school made uh, little blessing boxes and in the beginning of Lent, and they have been collecting their own offerings at home to give to the survival centers. So they will be presenting their offerings. We invite all of you to give gladly, knowing all of the gifts that we have received.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray together. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. What announcements might you have to share with us this morning? I know that Ginny has one, so uh, right next to you. There you go. Happy Easter, everybody. There are some members who were not able to be here this morning with us in person, and we would like to get some flowers to them. And if I could get some volunteers who might be able to do this, there are um, two that need to go to Reed's Landing. Three are in Wilbraham. One is the Life Care Center. One is uh, East Long Meadow on Porter Road. Two in Ludlow, Center Street, and Pauling Road. And one in Enfield. So if you think you might be able to help out and deliver any of these, if you'll see me, I have tags that can go on the flowers so you, uh, with their address and phone number. Thank you. Great. So, Jenny, where will you be located when this, right I'll say, when this vast crowd of people exits? Okay, at the little, at the little round table. Uh, Liz, please. In conjunction with that, if you donated for this lovely display, um, I will be up at the front because uh, I know if I put something in, I forgot what I ordered, but I have the list. So I'll be up in the front, so come and get your flowers to enjoy. Any other announcements? Uh, Ginny? Since Liz will be up at the front, I think I should too. <laughs> okay, all right, that actually makes sense. All right, so come up here if you need to get a flower or, and or if you are willing to deliver a flower to somebody today. Uh, one of those flowers we know is going to be delivered, Joanne, if you'd come up, um, please, is going to be taking to, taken to our friend Millie. Um, who has just come out of the hospital and is now at Life Care in Wilbraham. And uh, so Joanne will be taking, on our behalf, will be taking a flower. We'll also be taking the Sacrament of Holy Communion and as well as a prayer shawl to remind her that though she is absent from among us, she is still very much present in our hearts. So would you please pray with me as we bless these items that will go to Millie. Let us pray. O oh God, you come close to us on these holy days. You come close to us no matter where we are. We pray that these may all be signs of your love for Millie, that she would feel your presence with her and her presence with us. Bless us. Bless also those who will deliver flowers, that they too will be signs of your ever new love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last call on announcements. Oh, Donna? I don't say this enough, but I want to thank you, Pastor. Oh, no, she doesn't need a microphone. <laughs> no, I know. There is no need to say it, but I need to say it. Thank you. Thank you for your staff. Thank you for everybody that comes here week after week to listen to what you have got to say. <laughs> and I know that comes from Jesus. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, and I thank God for calling me here among you. Are there others? Are, oh, please, Kathleen. Indeed, there are countless people that work in front of the scenes and behind the scenes to make this happen. Our altar guild, our uh, folks who came for setup and clean up this week. Um, there's just so many, too many to thank, but it does not happen without all of your help and participation. So thanks be to God for the gift that all of you are. All right. All right, would you please stand?
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.